Good morning. We wish to welcome all who are gathered in the sanctuary this morning for the fourth Sunday of Easter, and as we celebrate also um, all our faithful women and um, Mother's Day as well. And have an opportunity to hear our kids sing and um, um, just to be about the work of the church celebrating. I want to begin with an announcement and a video. Um, we have a video from um, two of our pastors, um, Rachel and Zach Carter, who are serving in Hungary. And so we have a companion synod arrangement um, with um, different countries. And Zach and Courtney um, have a video about an update on what is happening in Northern Europe um, as part of our um, noisy offering opportunity to support um, the ministries and the people of Northern Europe and Ukraine. So if we could just, Chike, if you could just bring up that video and those who are watching live stream will see it on our monitors. Hi everybody. I'm Pastor Zach, and this is Pastor Rachel, and we wanted to make a very quick update for you because we've been hearing from many of you um, hoping to learn more about what is going on here in Hungary and Central and Eastern Europe since the violence broke out in Ukraine. First of all, thank you uh, to all those who have reached out um, and for your prayers for the, the people and our us and for our partners here in Central Europe, in Ukraine, in, in Russia during this very turbulent time. Um, the ELCA, through Lutheran Disaster Response and through me as the desk director, are coordinating with our local partners here in Europe, NGOs and Lutheran Church partners, to facilitate a humanitarian response to a very um, evolving situation. So a lot of the work right now with our Lutheran Church partners is grassroots on the ground level, and we are working with uh, working with them to support the efforts um, that they are coordinating for relief to this just very sad situation. Um, so if you would like to um, support the ELCA's response to the violence in Ukraine and the humanitarian efforts that are being implemented by our partners on the ground. Um, we can recommend, first of all, praying for our partners here, our partners in Russia, um, our partners in Ukraine who are living through this. And we can recommend, if you want to financially give, to go to the Lutheran Disaster Response page for the ELCA and you'll find a link for Eastern Europe Crisis Response. And all of those funds will go to support our partners on the ground here. So that's um, just an update from two of our associates in ministry um, in Hungary that we support through the Northeast Iowa Synod. And so we continue to do that with our noisy offering or any monies that are sent with the byline um, um, Lutheran Disaster Response through um, next week, um, May 15th. Um, you can also go directly online um, to Lutheran Disaster Response and, and, uh, and donate that way as well. A couple of other announcements. Um, on Wednesday, we have the opportunity to gather again at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary to hear our um, confirmants read their faith statements. And so they will be having pizza and taking pictures and preparing for um, the following Sunday um, when, um, for those of you who don't hear the faith statements in their entirety, those will, excerpts will be in our um, sermon next week as we celebrate um, their affirmation of baptism at the nine o'clock service. The radio broadcast is given in honor of Darren and Jody Rudd's 20th anniversary. They were married here at Salem on May 11th, and so we thank them for that support and uh, celebrate with them their 20th wedding anniversary. We also include in our um, prayers um, we commemorate Julian of Norwich, um, who in the Middle Ages, 13th century, um, went through the same tumult that Martin Luther did, although she's lesser known. And um, she had a very serious illness at the age of 30 and thought she was going to die. 
and she had a series of visions um, on the passions of Christ. And so when she came, when she was made well, um, she then went on to, to um, as a mystic, um, mother of the church, um, is what she is called. Um, she um, published um, a number of um, writings about those visions, and she is well known, if you Google um, her name and find a meme or a cup, what she is known for is um, her statement that all will be well, and all will be well, and in the manner of all things, all will be well. And so I think um, it's a good um, thing for us to be thinking about as we think of all the troubles in our world and um, uh, our mothers, um, Julian Norwich, the mother of the church, and all the faithful women that we'll be hearing about today um, and celebrate um, that perspective and understanding and wisdom. Just a couple uh, notes for the um, service for today as far as music. If you look at our gathering song, good Christians, friends, rejoice and sing, just be aware that the words for the bottom line got cut off. Um, the, it's alleluia. If you know that verse, it's just, we'll be singing alleluia in that last line. I don't know why it got cut off. Um, but then also for our hymn of the day, uh, we will be singing for all the faithful women. Um, that is a song that was um, written in, in the 1920s by a professor at Gettysburg, and it has 11 verses. We won't be singing all 11, but we will be singing the verse um, about Dorcas, who is in our second reading for today, Tabitha or Dorcas. And so if you look at um, that hymn, um, we sing verse 1, and then if you go to the verse for Dorcas, it's the ones um, that are written there, and then we sing the other two verses after that. Not difficult, we'll just sing along as we are able. I believe those are all the announcements. Let's take a moment as we gather for our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. So let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Christ Jesus. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world, glad news we bring. Which cannot die and 
dancing with hearts uplifted high. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And we bless, O risen Lord, and sing to The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord the Father, and who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, I guess we'll have the prayer of the day and then we'll have our kids come forward. Let us pray. O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Hey. Very good. Thank you. And you may be seated for our children's time. You are very right. In Easter, we remind over and over again that God's not dead, right? He's alive, and he's alive in you, and he's alive everywhere we go. And so when we talk about this is your last um, Sunday for um, Sunday school for a while, that doesn't mean you have more opportunities for faith formation, right? Um, God doesn't take vacations either, okay? So he's not dead, and he doesn't take a vacation. So there are still many of ways you can still um, learn about your faith um, wherever you go and whatever you do, right? That's what faith formation is. It's about how every day in your life you have an opportunity to find out what God is doing. And so we got Vacation Bible School coming up, right? Um, but you have those opportunities um, throughout the summer in different ways. Even when you go camping, you think, my gosh, God did a good job uh, making this campsite or this mountain or this lake, right? And we care for it. So there's many a ways to do that. And you've got your children's Bible? It, you can always open it at home, right? So today we're reading a story about Tabitha. Um, now, Tabitha was her Hebrew name. Um, her Greek name was Dorcas. And so we kind of know her in our, our um, church as Dorcas. But her name was Tabitha. And this is the story of Tabitha. Um, and the disciple Peter, now this is after the resurrection of Jesus, and Peter knows that Jesus is God, and um, he's going to tell that story and do what God did um, in his lifetime. He's going to do whatever Jesus told him to do. He's going to follow Jesus, right? So Peter was staying in Lydia near Joppa. He healed people and shared the good news of Jesus. Two men from Joppa ran up to Peter. Please come with us, they cried. Our friend Tabitha has died. And Peter felt sad. Tabitha was a follower of Jesus. Her heart was big. She gave her time to sew tunics for people who needed clothes. Everyone who knew Tabitha loved her. She was kind and was helpful. So there you have the picture of the two men pleading to Peter. Please come, because our friend Tabitha has died. And there, they're telling the story. There's Tabitha making all the wonderful quilts and garments that she used to make. Okay? Peter looked at the two men. Their eyes were filled with hope. Take me to her house, he said. Tabitha's home was filled with people, and they cried out in sadness. God, why did you take Tabitha? We miss her so. Who will make clothes for the people in need? Peter stood by Tabitha's body. A group of widows gathered around him. They cried and showed him the beautiful tunics that she had sewn. Peter asked them all to leave so he could be alone with her. He knelt and prayed to God. And then he stood up and whispered in Tabitha's ear, Tabitha, get up. And Tabitha's eyes popped open. And she saw Peter and smiled. Peter held out his hand and helped her up. When the widows saw Tabitha, they exclaimed, Tabitha is alive. It's a miracle. God is so good. Tabitha's story was told all over Joppa. More and more people believed in the Lord. So there is a story of a wonderful woman who took care of so many people. And when she died, that's what happens, is we get very sad, right? Um, and then we start to remember all the wonderful things. Um, and then this story reminds us um, that God brings people back to life. So God is with them, and God is not dead. And so we had a chance to again hear the stories and get to know um, how Dorcas or Tabitha did all that work. And we could do that with her, right? So who do you know that is kind and helpful? Who do you know who's kind and helpful? 
Can I give you a hint? It's Mother's Day. <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you like about your mom? How is she kind and helpful? See, you know, Dorcas was made quilts, right? Do you wash your own clothes? No. Okay. Do you shop for your own groceries? Yes. Good for you. You're going to make someone very happy. Do you do your own laundry? I fold my laundry. You fold your laundry. Good, good. So some kids learn, and I learned from experience, when I go out into the world to my school, college, or get my own apartment, the dishes don't get done automatically, and food doesn't show up in the fridge, and all of a sudden I realize, I miss my mom, right? So give thanks to mom while you guys are still in the same house, and help her out and learn how to fold your own clothes and help her out, right? That's what Mother's Day can be about. It's celebrating all the things that our mothers do and help them do it because they've got a lot of work to do, okay? So, who do you know who is kind and good? <laughs> all together, who do you know who's kind and good? Yeah. All together, one, two, three. My mother is kind and good. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we continue to learn, um, no matter where we are, um, no matter what we do, that you are with us. And um, just like um, this song that here is in our hands and our feet, um, the Spirit of God is moving in our mother's um, care for us. And so we give thanks on this day for our mothers, um, wherever they are and wherever they've gone, um, that they are loved and cared for and cherished forever. Um, so let us give thanks for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. I hope to see you sometime this summer. Right? And you can pick up a vacation Bible school um, registration and have... A uh, treat as you go back to your go back to your pews. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand, and he helped her. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is from the 23rd Psalm. 
that responsibly, beginning with Lecter. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restoreth my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from our God who was and is and is to come, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Alleluia. Amen. We often pay so much attention to Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved, who most assume is John and all the other disciples, the 12. So much so that we ignore the stories of all the faithful women who followed Jesus. We forget it was the women who first became proclaimers of this good news of the resurrection. 
So much attention is given to the 12, all men, in the story of Lazarus, his sister Martha and Mary. We hear of the roles that Martha and Mary played throughout the life of Jesus. But little is known about the role of Lazarus. Not a word is recorded about what he might have said after lying in the tomb for four days. When Jesus returned again to Bethlehem six days before the Passover and his betrayal, arrest, and crucifixion, they are again at the home of Lazarus. And again, Martha served. And Mary is again at the feet of Jesus, but this time anointing them with oil and wiping them with her hair. And Junas, one of the twelve who will betray him, is offended. And he speaks out. But Jesus told Judas to leave her alone, as this is in preparation for his burial. These are the roles that the women take that are so often overlooked. Lazarus, whom I'm sure was a very good man, and it is clearly evident that Jesus loved him very much, but there is never any scriptural account of him actually saying or doing anything. And yet growing up, I learned at a fairly young age that Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. And that was a really big deal. And then this week, as I was preparing to write my sermon, I was reminded of the story of a woman from Joppa who was also a disciple, whose name was Tabitha, or Dorcas in Greek, who was also brought back from the dead. And I think between the two, her story is the one lesser known or talked about. I bet you if I was to ask for a show of hands, which story have you heard or know better? The story of the raising of Lazarus or the story of the raising of Dorcas? Most of us would raise our hands because we remember the story of Lazarus. And yet Dorcas was devoted to good works and acts of charity. And she was called a disciple. And those who gathered around her to grieve and weep held on to the tunics and other clothing she had made while she was still with them. And they were not ready to let go. The story of the raising of Dorcas can be a call for us, too, to remember all the work of women throughout the whole of Scripture. And on this day that we celebrate Mother's Day and all the work and the roles that women have played back in the past, and even today, and continue to play out in our lives, we can remember and cherish and tell their stories. Our hymn of the day lifts up the roles of all the faithful women who served in days of old. And the song has 11 verses. We won't be singing all 11 verses, but we will sing the stanza that sings praise to the role of Dorcas and her important role in the community of Joppa. Now we shouldn't, and we don't have to wait till the passing of our faithful women in order to celebrate their roles in the past and in our lives today. Many are mothers, but not all, and they don't have to be. And as we look to the scriptures, in addition to their role of mothers, the women of the Bible were judges, reformers, prophets, leaders of the military, covert participants in resistant movements, leaders and principal funders of the early church, in every way equal to all the men in ministry and the discipleship in the early church. So today... Today, as we look to the roles of women in our church, they are quilters and baby kit makers. They assemble school kits and personal care kits. And they are our altar guild, preparing Holy Communion, changing the pyramids, tending to flowers and decorating our sanctuary. 
They provide meals at funerals and special events. They are also pastors and lay pastors and teachers and church administrators and musicians. They serve on executive council as president, financial and recording secretaries. The women in our church are very active. And in the church as a whole, our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, was the first women bishop elected in 2007. And now serving her second term as presiding bishop at the 50th anniversary of the ordination of women. Today, 33 of the 66 ELCA bishops are women. And we should cherish their participation in the life of the church. The wisdom, the talents, the perspectives that women play is such an important and vital role to the future of our church. And for that, we should give thanks. And we're not serving in the church or caring for home and family. Our women, our faithful women, serve in every branch of military, in every office of Congress. They have been vice presidents and secretaries of state and Supreme Court justices and CEOs and entrepreneurs, work at every level of health care, education, industry, agriculture, and finance. And the list just goes on. Our mothers wear a lot of hats. And today we celebrate and honor all of you. But on this Mother's Day, I want you to know you can't do this alone. You can't take on all these roles single-handedly. We should be there to support you, to be with you, to listen to you, trusting in your perspective and leadership and hard work. But even when we try to do this work together in unity for a common purpose, we too have to remember we can't do it alone. And none of us should even attempt to go it alone. We have to do this together as we follow the one sent by the Father, Jesus, our Good Shepherd. It is also Good Shepherd Sunday. And Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. When we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, he will lead us beside still waters, offer us rest in greener pastures, like I mentioned last week, when we all work together, we will come to see our cup is not half full, empty or even half full, but filled to the brim. Our cups overflow with abundant grace and mercy. May you come to find this peace and abundance as together we celebrate what God has done and what God will do. We can't do it all, can't please everyone, can't solve every problem, can't wipe away every tear from every eye, but God can. Our good shepherd is about that work. That's God's job, and God's got this. He's got us in his hands. He gathers us in his flock and does what he has promised. And so we look for and long for that day when the great multitude will be gathered from every nation, tribe, peoples, and languages. And there will be no more hunger or thirst, no scorching heat, no more tears. As the shepherd from the throne guides us to the springs of the water of life, and we will all sing, Amen, it is so. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen.
For all the faithful women who served in days of old, to you shall thanks be given, to all their story told. They served with strength and gladness in tasks your wisdom gave. To you their lives for witness, proclaimed your power to save. Lord, hear our praise of Dorcas, who served the sick and poor. Her hands were cups of kindness, her heart an open door. Send us, O oh Christ, your body, where people cry in pain, and touch them with compassion to make us whole again. O oh God, for saints and servants, whose name and those unknown, in whom all, all the ages your light of glory shone, we offer thank thanksgiving and fervent prayers we raise that faithful in your service our lives may sing your praise. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to God the Spirit, who binds the church as one. With saints who went before us, with saints who witness still, we sing glad hallelujahs and strive to do your will. Together we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection, for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust. 
unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments and dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding, as did Julian of Norwich, whom we commemorate today. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bless families of all shapes and sizes. We pray this week for our church families, Donald, Alyssa, and Chelsea Holton, Kylie Adams, Kirby, Abby, Madison, Becca, and Tori Holton, Alan Hansi, and Harris and Leanne Hansi. Surround them with your loving care and support. Protect them from all evil. Fill them with your abundant grace and mercy. Give them a sense of purpose and joy in serving others. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these our prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So as we share peace with one another there's a, and collect our offering, you're invited also to bring up any of your noising offerings during the musical offering and share that peace today and throughout the week. And for those listening live stream, may God's peace be with you as well. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace. Thank you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. 
Use us and what we have gathered here in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I receive this blessing. You invited to stand. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. So go in peace. Tell what God has done.